for the invitation. <laughs> so um, I'd like to present some work I've been doing lately in collaboration with with Sina over Bluebam in Oxford about um, uh, the variational um, description of a continuous and discrete uh, Lagrangian systems with fractional fractional forces. Of course, focusing on the discrete side and the integrators that we obtain. So for that, I will briefly introduce um, how we obtain variational integrators in the general Lagrangian, in, in a, for a general Lagrangian system. Then I will move to the fractional case we have been studying, and I will introduce the fractional variational integrators, and then uh, their performance in some simulations. And afterwards, I will uh, extract some observations and future work we are considering. All right, so first, uh, sorry. So uh, Lagrangian system, so we have, uh, how do we define a Lagrangian system? So we have normally a Lagrangian function, which we um, define over the tangent bundle of a configuration manifold. Here uh, I'm sticking to real real space because afterward we will consider fractional derivatives of the configuration uh, curves, and those are only well defined on real space and not on a, a general manifold. But of course, this is completely general for uh, for any smooth manifold. So once we have uh, our Lagrangian function, we can state the, the action action integral uh, as shown there. And that's for the continuous side. Uh, on the discrete side, what we do is we replace continuous curves by a discrete sequence of points in the given configuration manifold. And we approximate the action in one time step of um, or a time grid, which is defined by, as uh, you can see there, by Tk equal to Kh, with h is the fixed time, time step. So we approximate the action, the action integral um, in one time step of the, uh, and we define that as the uh, discrete, discrete Lagrangian. Then we sum over all our time grid and we obtain the, um, the discrete action sum. Okay, so Hamilton's principle says that uh, when we take variations of the action with respect to continuous or discrete uh, curves, uh, the sufficient and um, and necessary conditions for the extremals of, th of those curves are given by uh, the so-called uh, euler lagrange equations and uh, in the discrete case, the discrete euler lagrange equations. So these equations, um, when we have uh, enough regularity, provide the continuous dynamics, the curve x, uh, x of t in, in all times, and um, in the discrete case, we get the continuous, uh, the, the full sequence um, of uh, points in our manifold x k. Okay, so as I say, these are uh, necessary and sufficient conditions for the curves x and x k to be um, extremals of, of the action and the variations. Okay, and naturally, uh, this x k will be an approximation of the continuous dynamics given given by x of t. Okay, so how do we obtain the sequence of uh, x, x case? So uh, what we do is we iterate, um, uh, we use the, the discrete oil Lorentz equations for all case. Once we start the integrator for which we need to determine x, x1, and we can determine x1 by this step uh, number two, which is uh, basically the definition of um, the Legion transformation at a discrete level. As you know, the, in, the initial data for um, Lagrangian systems are uh, uh, the, zero, uh, the c zero configuration and zero velocity. So once we have x0 and x1, we can start the engine and we get the full sequence of x case. Okay, so this is what we call uh, variational integrators because we have obtained these equations through a variational uh, procedure. So these are interesting uh, because of their uh, nice geometric properties such as symplecticity and momentum preserving in the presence of, of symmetries. Symplecticity, moreover, um, ensures a nice behavior in the long term according to, uh, in terms of the energy. 
And moreover, uh, the uh, approximation, uh, the uh, order of accuracy of our uh, discrete, ap discrete approximation of the continuous dynamics, the P over there, is determined in the beginning by how well we approximate our action by means of the discrete Lagrangian. So uh, these are nice features of vari uh, variational integrators. And uh, what do I mean by low order, low order uh, as, as I put in the, in the title? So when we are considering only uh, uh, xk and xk plus one to, to have our approximation of the action, the maximum order of accuracy that we get is two. And to rise that up, we would need to uh, use inner nodes. But I, I, I am going to stick to, uh, to k xk and xk plus one, and therefore, um, uh, the maximum order we would get is two when we use trapezoidal or a midpoint rule. Okay, so the fractional case. So our motivation in the beginning was to, uh, to have some insight on how we can describe variationally Lagrangian systems with, with external forces, uh, which as you might know, they are not variational anymore. But you can take um, like roundabouts and you can deal with them by using, for instance, Lorenzo Lambert approach, which is not variational, but quite almost, or doubling of variables uh, and uh, other, other, um, other approaches. But we are taking a different one, as I, as, as I, will, as I will show. And uh, we finally uh, ended up considering uh, forces containing uh, the fractional derivative of the, of the configuration variables, as I, as I saw, saw here uh, um, in, the, in the slide. So these uh, are very, uh, this is a very interesting dynamics in uh, mechanical uh, engineering um, applications. And moreover, as I will see, as I will show, uh, this, uh, I, uh, the linear damping case is a particular case of, of, this, of this dynamic. So, and the linear damping case is uh, like the paradigmatic example of non-Lagrangian system, which cannot be, uh, I mean, non-Lagrangian in the sense that we cannot obtain its dynamics uh, through variational principles. So, um, uh, we have based, of course, our approach on previous literature by Rive and Cresson. And we have presented uh, this approach I mentioned in, this, in these two references here and um, uh, an, extra, uh, an extra result on the GSI paper I will comment later about. Okay, so what is a fractional, fractional derivative? So given a smooth function, um, a fractional derivative can be defined in uh, the Caputo, uh, Caputo form like this, which, uh, as you can see, are uh, non-local operators over the function uh, into, into, into fashions, advanced and retarded. Uh, there are several definitions of the fractional derivatives. For instance, this is the Caputo expression. Uh, there's the uh, Riemann-Liouville and, and, and others, but in general, they are related to each other, so we are fixing to this one. And uh, these fractional derivatives have uh, interesting properties, sometimes difficult to deal with, but um, uh, relevant in our approach. For instance, the asymmetric integration by parts, meaning that uh, the, mi um, the minus uh, derivative goes to plus and vice versa in the, in the integration by parts. They are additive. And when we apply twice the, the fractional derivative and we set alpha to one half, we get the full, um, the full time derivative. And that's basically why um, when we have uh, alpha equal to one half there, <coughs> we recover the linear damping. Okay, so this is um, uh, our approach in, in short. Uh, what we do is we double the space of curves. Of curves. I mean, we consider both X and Y, and we define this action here for L, the same, the same Lagrangian function, and this extra term um, coupling the 
the minus and plus fractional derivatives, rho is just a real damping, damping uh, coefficient. Okay, in order to discretize, we do the same as before for the Lagrangian part, so to say, the LD for X and Y, and we take these two approximations of the fractional derivatives, of, of the fractional derivatives. So um, these approximations are interesting, why? Because uh, they capture uh, uh, most of the uh, interesting features of the continuous fractional derivatives, meaning that they are not local again in the discrete, in the discrete time. They, um, their integration by parts <coughs> at a discrete level is also asymmetric. And when alpha is equal to one half, we recover significant, I mean, recogni recognizable uh, discretizations of the linear, uh, of, the, of the velocity, of the linear derivative, so to speak, uh, say the, uh, the backward and the forward um, difference operators. These two properties were quite uh, difficult to prove. So we are using this approximation for the fractional derivatives, and now what we do is we apply here uh, the Hamilton's principle. We apply Hamilton's principle, and what we do, moreover, is we restrict the class of vari variate curves we are using, meaning that we use the same variations for the x and the y. So what we obtain is um, a set of x equa uh, equations on the x variables and a set of equations on the y variables, and both together um, are a, a sufficient set uh, a, sufficient, uh, a sufficient condition for the extremals of the action. I mean, we get those plus those, and um, the both of them are a sufficient condition for the extremal. So, in brief, what we are doing is, in order to get the uh, dynamics we want to describe, to model, we need to pay the price of doubling the, um, the space of curves, plus, when we apply Hamilton's principle, we need to restrict the, the variations, but at the end of the day, we get the dynamics we want with interesting feature that these equations can be proven to be these ones in reverse time. So we are not adding, we are not adding extra physical information and we can focus on the X side, so to, so to, speak, so to speak. So we get the dynamics we were pursuing continuously and um, discreetly. And basically this discrete and we call them restricted because we are restricting the, the, var the variations. Uh, okay, so um, these are our new discrete equations. And um, to define our integrator, we do the same. We iterate the, um, the equations once we can define x1, x1 from x0 and v0, the initial data of our mechanical of our mechanical problem. And out of this algorithm, we get the output, the, the whole sequences, the, the whole sequence of x, x case. Okay, so this uh, integrator cannot be uh, symplectic anymore because we are approximating a system which is not symplectic, it is forced. And therefore, what we are doing is we are focusing on the, um, in terms of simulations and performing, we are focusing on, on the tracking of the configuration variables, the energy, which in case of uh, integrators of variational origin are proven to be superior than uh, regular ones. And in terms of order, as I, as I said in the beginning, we are considering low order integrators. So what we do is we set a, a, a midpoint or trapezoidal rule for the LD and this approximation of the discrete uh, of the fractional derivative and we want to now try test the, the integrators and see what happens. So we do some simulations and to test, to test them, what we do is we pick the, the easiest example we, cons we can consider, which is the linearly damped, linearly damped har harmonic oscillator, which corresponds to our setting when alpha is equal to one half. And this uh, exact solution we know, so we can compare. And first, what we see is that uh, when we um, when we um, display, so, uh, I mean, we uh, run uh, several fractional variational integrators with different alphas, we only get 
we, we only get the, the, the correct tracking when alpha is equal to one half, naturally. And in that case, what we see is in the upper, in the upper plots, what we see is that the tracking of the, of the configuration variable is much better than the, the, Euler, uh, the Euler methods. Moreover, um, we see that the, uh, basically this method is equivalent to uh, the Lagrange, uh, the method that we could obtain discretization the lagrange lambert principle. And in terms of convergence, we, what we obtain is that the method in this region over here is convergent uh, of order one, but it, flattened, it flattens quite, quite fast. And the same, ha the same happens for the energy. I mean, this, uh, this uh, convergence plot is both for, for, uh, for configuration and velocity. And in terms of energy, the tracking is much better than the Euler methods. And uh, in terms of convergence, it's quite, it's quite the same as, as configuration and, and, and velocity. And uh, this is for alpha equal to one half. We also uh, do for um, alpha different from one half, and we use this um, uh, this example, and we see that again the, tra the tracking is is uh, is quite nice, and the uh, convergence behavior is um, is pretty similar. So uh, the conclusions that we extract fr from this, from the performance, of, uh, the performance of, the, of the integrator are the following. So we see that the tracking of the configuration is, is much better than the Euler uh, methods. Uh, the, the, the method is equivalent to Lorentz Lambert methods and, that, and that's, that, that can be proven by, uh, by means of this property here which we proved in, in the beginning. The energy, again, is better tracked by, than the Euler methods. And what we prove in the GSI and the GSI paper is that the method uh, should be order one. And the same for uh, alpha different from, from, one, from one half. So what we obtained, what we observed in the simulations is what we expect, <coughs> as expected um, theoretically, but as if you recall, we get a, like a fast flat, uh, flattening of, of the convergence. And we wonder why this is happening. And um, what we think is the following. Uh, if you recall, I, uh, as I was saying in the beginning, for uh, variational integrators, the better you approximate your um, your action, the better uh, uh, your integrator will approximate the, the, the dynamics, right? So um, the accuracy of the method depends on how well you approximate to your action. So P global equal to one is what you obtain theoretically, but it is more than you would expect um, uh, uh, according to that, because this approximation of the uh, of the fractional derivatives is, is it turns out, turns out to be only consistent as proven in this in this um, in this reference here. So on the one hand, we have only a consistent approximation of the fraction of the fractional derivative, <coughs> and we are uh, like a zero uh, a zero accurate ap approximation of the fractional derivative, an order two um, approximation of the Lagrangian part, as I said in the beginning. So we are getting something something in between. Something, something in between, which is, which is um, a, a nice result. And we think that the, uh, the flattening, the flattening of the convergence is uh, due to this consistency of the approximation. So as future work, what we want to do is to improve, to improve the, the accuracy of the method. And for that, what we want to do is to increase the order of the approximation of the fractional, of the fractional derivative. And for that, uh, what we are going to do is to apply uh, high order te higher order techniques like those in, in this reference here by Sina. Uh, and we will take advantage of uh, the definition of the, um, of the fractional derivative, meaning it is an integral and therefore we can uh, take any quadrature we want 
and we can raise the, the approximation and see uh, how the new, um, the new integrators um, perform. And that was it. Thank you very much. <coughs> <clears throat>